Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. If you're new to this channel, in this series I essentially play 15 minute plus 10 second rapid games on chess.com, talk you through my thought process while I play with the goal of getting to 2000 ELO, but the primary reason for these videos is to try and educate you guys so that you can improve your chess by implementing some of the ideas that I'm talking about and then using the computer like analysis after the game to go a bit deeper into some of the ideas see whether the computer agrees with some of my decisions or not and then also being able to actually play the moves out on the board to make it easier to follow rather than in the game when I'm calculating, just drawing a bunch of arrows, saying a bunch of notations and hoping you can follow along. With the introduction out of the way, I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody who is supporting the channel. Really, really appreciate it. The growth has been fantastic. And for those of you new to the channel, hopefully I can convince you to stick around in the rest of the video. Anyways, with that being said, let's get into the game. All right, so we have the black pieces against Sam08 Spoilt from India. Just over 2,000 ELO, so let's give him the good old Karo Khan treatment and see what we can do. So d4, d5, of course, white can respond in many ways, but we're getting a lot of exchange Karo Khans. In the previous episode, we got an exchange Karo Khan as well, which you can find in either the Rapid Racing Climb series playlist, or I have now created playlists for some of the main openings that I play, so you can watch videos on my channel by opening, essentially. So I hope that's useful for you guys. Bishop d3, I'm expecting moves like c3, knight f3, maybe knight e2, depending on how white wants to develop. We're going to go knight f6, because we might be looking to play bishop g4, and the knight supports that. Okay, yeah, knight f3. I think bishop g4 looks pretty logical. Apparently we've transposed to the Indian game, um, whatever that means. Um, let me think. Bishop g4 looks good. I mean, obviously, if he tries to push us away, then, like, this is no problem. He might go c3 and try and get the queen out this direction, but it should be okay. Now, we actually got pretty much this exact move order in the last episode because the last episode we played actually no two episodes ago we played two games and um i think we went into this line with bishop f4 knight c6 and c3 and in that game i quit i played queen b6 and we went for the pawn on b2 which turned out not to be the best way to go about it. And the better way after bishop f4, knight c6, c3, is to go for bishop d6. And if the queen tries to come out like this, then not only is the knight going to be a problem for my opponent, because if I take it, then he's going to have to take back with the pawn. Let's go knight c6. He's going to have to take back with the pawn and ruin his structure, but also, in a lot of cases, apparently we can give up this b7 pawn if the queen comes out like this. And if we can get these bishops traded, we can castle, play moves like rook b8, go after our opponent, because our knight will be defended by the queen, etc. I don't know whether we're going to go into that variation today, but um, it's definitely worth checking out in the previous episode. It's like yeah, I think two episodes ago, um, if you want to try and learn about that. So, I feel like we don't have exactly the same move order. I'm not sure why exactly, but yeah, bishop d6 looks pretty logical here. Because this bishop's good, right? I want to get it off the board and then castle. We could end up trading a bunch of pieces, which isn't ideal, but, you know, we do have to play the best moves regardless of whether I want to keep pieces on the board simply so I can try and grind out a win. So let's go bishop d6. Of course I could put the bishop on e7, but I feel like it's not really doing anything. I have sometimes seen opponents play bishop g5 in these sorts of cases. Um, 
it is certainly a way you can go. But I think it is better to take a rookie one. White tries to put a lot of pressure on this e5 square because this is kind of one of our breakout options. So white wants to try and control that. Uh, we're going to castle. You never really castle queenside in these uh, structures because white has way too much counterplay on the queen side of moves like c4, throwing this pawn forward, throwing the a pawn, and we don't really have enough going on on the king side if we go queen side. Um, at least I don't think it's viable. It, it might be something worth worth looking into if you want to, you know, bring a bit of spice to the exchange, Karo Khan. But I haven't personally really given it much credit. Although then maybe that's unfair. Okay, so bishop g6 is definitely a move to try and trade bishops. But I can do that at any point. Um, for now, we still maintain this pin, so there's no rush. Rook e8 looks like a fine move. Potentially trying to go e5. Again, I'm pretty sure we've got a very similar... Get, like structure to this in previous episodes um, so where we get this isolated queen pawn we have like bishop to e2 and I believe the way to go about those situations is to drop the bishop to g6 and claim the diagonal that the bishop has stepped off of to go to e2 so rook a can't be a bad move uh, we're going to play it I think this rook might come to c8. We might expand on the queen side with a6 and b5 and maybe hop our knight in like this. Because if our opponent tries to play moves like b3 to stop us from doing that, then we could take advantage of a weakened c pawn. Also, if this queen comes to c2, which is quite a common square, then rook c8 and we could have some tactics on the c file with like knight to b4. And like I said, if you check my Karo Khan playlist, you will, if you watch those videos, see similar games to these. Maybe even the same move order. But not only do I start to develop my own understanding of the position, and am therefore able to play it better over time, but also it kind of just drills these positions into your head. Because chess is a lot about pattern recognition, right? About recognizing different patterns and you know that means that if you're getting similar positions a lot of the time then you start to see these patterns for example if we go e5 and we get some kind of exchange like this then sometimes there are tactics like knight c4 and if you take then like bishop h7 and my queen's gonna hang with check which can happen sometimes so you know worth knowing so he goes for this put some pressure on h7 let's defend it by my knight so i'm not worried we can always play bishop g6 if we need to e5 is a move but i'd like to start with rook a to c8 because i've you know the move knight b5 looks very tempting to fork the bishop and the queen and the pawn the pawn can't take the knight because of the pin on the queen obviously I feel like this is a little bit inaccurate. I don't know whether queen b1 is better. But it's not that easy a position to play with white. He goes a3 to stop my knight from jumping in. Which is logical. Logical. Um, I don't really want to go bishop here because I want to try and make use of this pin. This doesn't work and then looking at this because the knight still defends. I feel like we should be able to make something happen as a result of this pin, though. E5 is a move we need to really seriously consider. If take, take. There's always ideas of D4, potentially. But then, white can always play C4, B5. It can put a lot of pressure e5 of course leaves us with an isolated queen pawn though and this knight is no longer pinned hmm interesting position 
The move queen f4 sort of comes to mind, though. Just applying general pressure. If g3 is played, then I'm probably just going to retreat and claim the... It's a weakness. I, this isn't a threat trying to kick the knight off the defense of h7 because my bishop will be blocking it. Queen f4 looks kind of nice, and we did this kind of thing in a previous game. Um, my opponent played like knight b3 in this sort of position and just doubled his pawns. It was horrific because he was trying to defend the d4 pawn or take advantage of c5. So, mm. yeah, queen f4 looks really nice. Like I said, if he goes g3 and we get kicked out, is that good? King g2? I don't even know if that's good for us, because I'm trying to claim that's a weakness, but it might actually just be helping his position to give the knight more support. Because if we take, I'd like him to have to take with the pawn, but if his pawn and king move up, then that won't happen. So maybe e5 is the best idea. So let's do some calculation now. I've looked at a few candidate moves, and e5 looks like the most promising. You could also play a move like a6 preparing b5, of course, which kind of threatens like a6 b5. We might be threatening b4 because it's you can't really take and allow this. Um, after a6. Did I just say a5, b4? I meant a6, b5. <laughs> um, and a4 isn't really playable because then b4. Do we have a threat if white does nothing? Then we'll take and c3 will become very weak. Okay, let's go a6. This can't be a bad move. Worst case scenario as well, we could do this kind of maneuver and take control of the c4 square. Is knight to e5 concerning? Maybe? Because it's no longer pinned, obviously. Ah, but then we just take on a d4. Because the knight steps off of the defense. And then he can't take because his queen hangs. So, yeah, this isn't even playable. Which is very nice. I just feel like the queen's misplaced on c2. Like, yeah, you're putting pressure on, but at the cost of exposing your queen, your bishop doesn't have any retreating squares on this diagonal. I don't know. It You relieve this pin, of course. Maybe the queen belongs on b1, though. But it's a tough move to play, because then your rook can't swing over to like the d file or something, which seems like the most natural continuation. I think our rooks are very well placed, though. Okay, I'm expecting b5 and then queen b1. That's what I think he's going to do. And then he can look for moves like knight e5 and then knight to d4 won't be a problem because the queen will be off of the diagonal. b5, queen b1, can we go knight b3? Sorry, b3, a5, what am I on about? I was looking in the future, but... Even if we get to c4. No, it is good though. It is good. Here, if he goes a4, then we push. If he plays a different move, I don't know what he would play. But if he leaves his queen there, then we can push b4 again. Because if takes, then takes. And we still have the pin. Taking space seems good. We also shut down c4 forever for white. So I think that's probably a good thing. Just taking some nice space on the queen side. It can't be bad. You know, e5 might be the move, but I feel like the queen side expansion is a bit risk-free in comparison to pushing e5, because e5 could damage our structure in the center. Okay, so do we want to go knight to a5? Knight a5, maybe knight e5. Knight in. 
If he trades, drops the bishop back, then we can focus on this b2 pawn, which is looking incredibly weak. And his queen's also a bit locked out of the game if that happens. Hmm. Do lose a bit of support for uh, the e5 push if we move our knight, but we can also we can drop this knight back. Bishop g6 is probably a good move, but I don't want to trade on White's terms and activate his queen. The thing is, if he goes knight e5 and pushes g4, and we drop our bishop back, and he exchanges like this, I don't think that's really a problem because we have like all of our pawns on light squares in that scenario. So we're kind of blunting this bishop. So I'm going to go for it. Knight a5. Knight on the rim is normally dim. But here I think it's strong. Because these are some nice looking squares. If my opponent goes b3 to stop knight c4. Then I probably just retreat and go look at your c3 pawn. That's a bit weak mate. a3 is also weak. We could always take a3 as well. Because there's no rook coming to a1. Knight c4 looks good. He has no threats, I don't think. Let's do it. Of course, we're being looked at by a ton of pieces, but we have so much support for the knight that that is not a problem. And we're shutting down a lot of white's counterplay, or potential counterplay, by doing this. But white also has a great grip over the e5 square, which is a source for our counterplay. So the position is quite locked, and we're going to need to come up with something to try and force some kind of breakthrough. We're on seven minutes, which is not bad by my standards. And he takes... Okay, well, I think taking with the b pawn makes the most sense. We could take with the d pawn. I know we're taking away from the center, but we could take with the d pawn and put our knight on d4. Uh, I don't think it's really worth it, especially with this pressure. Our knight probably needs to stay on s6 for now and also fight for e4. So okay, let's take with the B pawn. Again, I don't think this is very scary. Because either he takes... Well, he just takes our bishop, most likely. And then, if he doesn't, we're going to trade bishops. But now we control these two squares, which could be quite useful. We're going to put a rook on B8 to pressure B2. Which is going to be annoying for our opponent to deal with. Because the thing is, right, we both have one semi-open file. His semi-open file pressures e6, which is well defended by a pawn. Whereas b2 can't be defended by a pawn. If we go rook b8 and he tries to go b3, then that's going to weaken these squares. And he's going to just self-pin. So, like, that's not good. We might double up on the b file as well. Do something like this. Okay, rook b8 looks like a no-brainer. I'm just making sure there's no tactics on the king side. Maybe he wants to do this. But even then, we can probably just take. Or let him take and just take with a rook. So I don't see an immediate problem. He might be trying to do this, though. The bishop doesn't get trapped, which is worth noting, because... If the pawns get exchanged, we just go back to h5. But if f4 gets played, we can play bishop g6 preemptively. f5, we facilitate trades, which I think is in our favor, because if the queen gets in, then b2 falls. And if something like f4, I think bishop g6 is the move I want to play. If he takes with the knight, then we take with the pawn. And like I said, we build up this, like, fortress of light squared pawns to try and dominate the bishop 
And then our knight is probably better than the bishop in that scenario because the structure's so locked. Maybe it's good for him, but I don't know. It seems like it... Hmm. Rook e3, okay. That's spicy. That's a spicy move. I mean... It looks kind of scary, but it's not really threatening anything, is it? Bishop g6? Looks like a decent move. We don't have to do it yet, though. We could go for this plan of doubling up still. Or we could play queen b6. And I don't see how he defends b2. It's impossible, right? Queen b6. There are some ideas of overloading the knight. With the knight coming into d7 with a fork. But I think the best he can do is get a rook and a pawn for a bishop and a knight. Which is no good. Because our bishop's going to end up on g6 and completely shut down any attack so queen b6 i was just checking this line but then like i can just take and then knight takes rook rook takes knight we're gonna force a queen trade there anyway because again we control all the light squares queen b6 looks like a free pawn Let's do it. I hope I'm not missing anything. He could go b3. And after takes, like, move the bishop. But then this is a constant threat. We could maybe even advance it to b2. And then, like, rook c2. We don't have an immediate way in, but, like, queen b3, looking at some weak pawns. We are just a, a clear pawn up if worse comes to worst. And even if the pawn ends up falling, then c3 and a3 are very weak. The, the scenario that I want, though, is for us to take and force a queen trade. Because then his kingside pressure isn't very relevant. Because I know I'm not getting mated. Wow, that's a move I missed. Bishop a4. So he's going to attack my rook. I mean, I've got to move my rook. If we take... Well, then if he takes, then we take, and we're up a rook. Uh, well, we're up a pawn at the very, very least. But if we go here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here, then we're just down in exchange for a pawn, which is not worth it. So... Rook d8, I think. Well, no, rook d8, then knight c6. So rook c8. It does leave d7 a little bit exposed, but it should be okay. Because our bishop should be able to come to g6 if we need it to. And now I'm assuming he wants this to defend. The bishop looks a bit vulnerable there though, because it has no escape. So if we play a move like queen a5, bishop c6, rook b6, bishop d7, if, if we exchange like this though, then maybe we can go like bishop b6, unless a rook's hanging in that scenario, because I'm thinking of skewering. This is very interesting. And like I said, our light squared control is really being shown here. The only the only issue is that I feel like our major pieces are better than his, but his minor pieces are quite strong, especially this knight on e5. It's always looking at like different forks and infiltrations and that. There is less pressure on our king though with this bishop off of c2. 
This also isn't a move because um, we take it. You could go g4. g4, bishop g6, take, take. Rook e2 or rook c2. Well, rook c2, then the bishop's probably getting trapped. If he goes like b3, we can just take and win the queen. So g4, bishop, g6, take, take, rook e2, then the bishop's got an escape. Um, we could consider knight e4, but that might be his best way to go about it, because then he gets ample defense of b2, and his bishop has a way out to get back in to c2. I still feel like we hold the advantage though. Uh, we still have a lot of pressure because like I said, his open, his semi-open file attacks e6. e6 is well defended by a pawn and our semi-open file attacks b2. And b2 is a very backwards pawn because it's going to really struggle to advance any, anytime soon because we have such a strong grip over the b3 square. So I think we're definitely grinding a small positional advantage. I would guess the evaluation might be like minus 0.6. Okay, rook c2. Well, what if we attack the bishop? Again, b3, we just take and then take and then take. We go up a minor piece. So, queen a5. Knight c6, we just do this. And then we go up two pieces for a rook. Queen a5, bishop d7. Rook c7. I don't see how the bishop escapes. How is this bishop getting out? Here, here, again. Bishop a5. Sorry, queen a5. And if like knight c6, same thing. This is looking like a lost bishop, and I feel like the best he can do is two pieces for a rook. But then he has issues of like bishop to g6 and a skewer on the rook and queen, and then it will be like just a clear piece up if we can get that. He might have missed this. Let's hope. Let's hope this works. Down to three minutes. Not bad. And again, you know, the exchange Cairo Khan, like I said, gets a lot of stick for being quite drawish or quite boring. And yeah, there's not some massive tactical flurry, for sure. But um, we have a lot of pressure, a lot of positional pressure, because we're just eating up so much space. And this bishop looks a bit lame. It's been sitting on a5, sorry, h5 forever. But it could put some real pressure on now if it goes here because this bishop's vacated the diagonal it was initially on. Yeah, I think we just take. I'm expecting him to go like this and win the c rook to force our rook onto the c file. Because if we take and take and take, then we keep our pressure on the b file. And we are kind of threatening queen to a3, take and take. Okay, let's do it. Two pieces for a rook. I'm expecting this. I think it's a bit more accurate than just taking here. Do we want to put our king on h8 or f8? Honestly, I think f8. I think f8. And he's got problems. A lot of problems in his position. Yeah, it's a bit more accurate. Still got some sustained pressure going on. Okay. Well, I think we should start with bishop g6. Just to shore up the defense and get my bishop on a nicer diagonal. Do we want to throw a knight in? f3... 
could rotate like this. But we can put the knight on e4 at any point. Let's improve our other pieces. How do we want to improve them? Hmm, I don't know. Well, let's start with rook b8. I want to bring my queen back to d6, I think. Just to hold everything down. Uh, this is like a move, but it's not concerning yet. I'm looking, he might be trying to do, I don't know, swing the rook over and bring the queen in. Which is kind of annoying, actually. I feel like I should have retreated the queen first. But, okay, it's not the end of the world. This should be winning. Should be. Oh, this isn't really a move anyway. Because of bishop h5 which is going to force g4 and then that must favor me i feel like f3 okay so he really wants to stop this that makes sense let's drop the queen back we can now try and take advantage of these dart squares in tandem with the knight this is always a move, but I don't feel like it is worth playing yet. Again, we can do that whenever we want. There's no massive rush in this position from our side. The rook might come here as well. Okay. I don't want to allow his queen to get on the diagonal before I do. Knight d7. I want to control g3. I don't want his queen to go there. Because then there could be tactics on like my queen and my rook. Okay, bishop d3 would force the rook to move to one of these two squares. But I don't see how that's that beneficial to us, to be honest. Queen f4 looks nice. Is there any sacks? I don't think so. What does Queen F4 do? It just kind of exists. G3. It's a weakness, but... What about Bishop D3? This feels like the right moment to play it. Because if the Rook goes to F2, it blocks his Queen. If it goes to d2, then this is some nice pressure. He's doing well by playing quick, though. Put pressure on me. I want to start with rook b6, I think. Because I'm. Is this concerning? Nah, I can just drop the queen back. There's nothing to worry about. Check. This is covered. Let's bring the queen in. If he goes g3, then we just retreat the queen. And we claim that he's made some weaknesses, which in this case I believe he has. He's also going to be blocking off his own queen's potential entrance to the position. Hmm. He's doing a good job. Of making our life difficult. Where does this knight want to go? Don't know. <sighs> this rook's kind of struggling to do much because he's defending b2, but it is tying his rook down, I suppose. Wow, no, that can't be played, surely. No, no, no. Now e4 is weak. 
he just tried so hard with the move f3 earlier to stop my knight getting in. Now this isn't a concern because your queen can't even get into the position. So you've blocked it off, which is why I wanted you to play g3. Feels like rook e5, knight here, we're just going to trap the rook probably. Or at least make it do some really awkward dance. Okay, I feel like we've just induced a game losing weakness in his position. So let's see if we can now take advantage of it properly. Queen d1. Is that what he wants? H7's defended, so... Here, here. Hmm. Oh, G3's defended, I missed that. Should I get my bishop out of there first? I'm just going to get my bishop out just just for safety. Just because if I put my knight on e4, then my bishop's no longer going to be protecting h7. So I just want to be safe. You can always play the move h5 as well. Try and shore the position up. Because there's no rush for us to do anything here. His, he's just creating more and more weaknesses in his position. And we now have the e4 square to make use of. If our knight could teleport to uh, d3, I think it would be basically game over. Because the pressure on b2 would be too much. Let's throw the knight in. Probably play h5 next. h5, g4. Well, that's kind of scary. That's an interesting move. Maybe we wait. Mm, if he goes g4 though. Maybe we just go h6. I'm just going to shift the king over. Again, he's finding some really nice counterplay. Maybe f5 is an idea? Blue the knight. And then maybe the bishop wants to go somewhere else. I don't know. These kind of ideas are tempting. But he can just defend. He can just defend. Like I said, he's doing a very good job keeping us out. And like, yeah, we own the light squares, but. Basically, all his pawns are on dark squares, and it's not all that easy to take advantage of it. Be aware this diagonal does exist, but I don't think we can take advantage of that. Might try and do this. That would be a nice breakthrough. Should we go rook b3? I don't think it can be bad. Just put in a ton of pressure. We should be able to defend fine with these pieces anyway. This could be met with f5. And if you take, I could take with the bishop or I could take with the pawn. There, there. Really? There's no tactics on e6. This is tough. This is really, really tough. I don't know how he's making this so impossible. I mean... 
I'm confident there is a way through. I just need to find it. What are we doing after this move, though? Okay, he goes back. Do we want to induce that? I don't know. Let's put my bishop there. Ah, we could have gone here and then gone for this whole shebang. That was stupid. I should have gone queen b6. Because that would have been a beautiful tactic to pull off. Oh well. Let's just do this to waste a bit of time. Just to gain some time on the clock. Throw the ball back in his court. Because I'm not sure what I want to do. If I'm missing like an obvious plan, please do comment below because I'm really struggling to find a way through this position. I mean, obviously I have the advantage because I have a bishop and a knight for a rook, but... Please do this. Please do that. He won't do it, but, you know, I can, I can wish. G5 is an idea, but he's never going to fall for that. Can I go here for ending this? If he pushes, can we go in? There. I kind of want to play f5. Okay, but what about here, here? After g4. No, g4, we're going to have to retreat. Okay, he doesn't. Let's go f5. He might want to try and open up the king side, but I don't believe in it. Now we have a bit more control over g4. We could always reconfigure like this. Maybe our queen wants to do something like this and come over to the king side to help out. The rook is not only blocking his counterplay, but it's also putting pressure on his position. Okay... He's not actually doing anything, though. I want to do this. Or this, to try and trade queens. If we trade queens, I feel like we can win this. Because we won't have to worry about getting attacked. And we can just focus on manoeuvring. We could play moves like king f7, bishop d3, knight e4. And I feel like he would collapse at some point. Really interesting game. So interesting. Okay, queen e2. Let's drop. Could we have gone for this? Maybe. But again, I think we can kind of do that whenever we want. Just want to keep all the trumps in my position. So he goes g4. Wow, okay. Here, here. Can we go knight here? I think so. This now doesn't work because he takes. Maybe it does, but I don't want to risk that. If he pushes, that's good for us. Here, I'm sure we have this move. Then where does the rook go? I don't know. And it also can't really defend f4. And then everything falls apart for him. Just trying to set traps. Trying to set traps. And also, it's all good if, like, rook g3, knight h4, rook f3 takes and takes because our queen will now defend that. That can't be good. That's your counterplay gone. 
Do we go here? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. F4 is tough to defend. Queen here. We drop back. We go g6. We transfer to like b8. Looking at both these squares. And he has no breakthrough. Here, just here. And now his rooks are out of ideas. Our bishop's glued in his territory. Our rook is causing problems for him. And I don't know how he defends this. Because this isn't playable. If f4 falls, we should win. Especially if we can secure a queen trade. This is, wow, an incredible game. I know it's not over yet, but it's been incredible. Because he has held on so, so well. I'm like, really... Um... So would really surprised with how well he's done this and made our life so difficult and the game is not over not by a long shot because even if we do win this pawn and trade the queens you know we have two pieces in a pawn for a rook but the breakthrough isn't obvious we've got a ton of pressure but we've had a ton of pressure all game and we still have struggled to break through okay well, obviously, I'd love to see an early resignation, but I don't see it happening. Unfortunately. So, let's lock in. It's wasting time, though. That's good. We're catching up on the clock. Hopefully, he starts to tilt and play some bad moves. We could really do with that. Okay, now we can force a trade. I was just seeing if it was worth taking with the knight. And looking at discovered checks, but then King goes back there. So let's force a trade. Okay, there we go. Two pieces and a pawn for a rook. How do we convert this? Here, here. Then we can push this pawn. And then this should be winning. Everything is defended so well because of our light squared control. It's fantastic stuff. Truly fantastic. And yeah, this F pawn should be a big problem for him. Check. Where's your king even going? Okay. I, I think we just push again. And we'll probably push again. I don't know where his rook's going though, because his rook's trapped. Wow. What a game. What an incredible positional game. That's been one of the best in the rating climb so far. Definitely a long game. And I'd love to see what the computer has to say about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was really, really long. But if you've made it to the end of the game, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please drop a like and subscribe. Comment if you think that I missed a breakthrough at any point. But with that being said, firstly, as you guys um, always ask, you always want a pose. So I think I've started to do those in between games. Today, we can do one of these. This little shoulder. The lighting isn't great, but whatever. <laughs> and yeah, let's get into the analysis. All right, so me and my opponent both played that at a very high accuracy. Um, my opponent played at 85.9% according to game review, and I played at 89.8, just under 90. But I'm surprised that's not higher because apparently I only made one mistake all game. So be interesting to see where that was. I'm, I think the opening was played pretty perfectly from both sides. You know, e4, c6, d4, d5. White has a ton of options here. White can push. White can take, obviously, like he did. F3 is a move. Bishop D3 is a move. Knight C3 is a move. Knight D2 is a move. Uh, you can even play B... F Wait, no, not in this position, actually. Uh, but basically, there's a ton of moves. And the exchange Caro is surprisingly popular. So, 
we develop like this. Develop like this. I play bishop g4. Knight c6 is interchangeable, really. h3, bishop h5. Of course, there's no need to take yet. Like, you may as well just maintain the pin. You can if you want, and just build up on the light squares, but there's no real need. I'm going to refresh the page, by the way, because otherwise I'm going to get those annoying errors at the top. The whole analysis. So, h3, we just retreat. Obviously, if g4, bishop g6, this is just good for us. White can't take, really, because after takes, we have a ton of pressure on the king side of our open rook. So he castles, which is logical. We go e6. And then bishop to f4 is just a normal developing move. Knight c6, we can go bishop d6 at any time. He goes c3. Bishop d6 takes takes. Now white doesn't have to trade, like I said. He could well he could retreat. He could play bishop to g5 if he wanted. But he's not actually threatening anything. So this is no real concern. Apparently we can play queen b6, which is the best move here. And offer up a damaging of our pawn structure. I assume to take advantage of the open file. Pressure on the queen side. It's difficult for white to defend this as well, because if he plays a move like queen e2, we can take, and then if he takes with the queen, then we take on b2. And if he takes on f6, rook g8. And yeah, this knight has nowhere to go, because the knight either goes to d2 and a3 and gets captured, or we win the rook. Oh, I think rook f8 is a bit more accurate because of bishop h7 if we go to g8. But it's winning all the same. Anyway, bishop takes, queen takes, rook e1. We castle, knight bd2, rook f8. This is all very, very standard. Queen c2, which is a move for sure, but I think it's a bit inaccurate. Queen b3 or a4 is a bit better according to the engine. But I think he played it in a nice manner with a3, stopping knight to b4. Because the thing is, if he goes for a move like rook c1, then knight b4, queen b1, takes, takes, probably bishop g6, taking control of the now vacated diagonal. Let's say a move like queen e2. Then I'm going to go h6. Now h6 is an important move. Because if I play a move like a6, then knight e5, and he's going to take my bishop probably. But if I start with h6, then knight e5, and then bishop to h7, and I can maintain the bishop. Maybe I can go to f5 first, and then g4 can be met with bishop h7. But you get my point. We preserve the bishop, and this is a nice diagonal. And as we saw in the game as it progressed... This bishop played a major role in um, really constricting his position. So, rook a c8, he goes a3 to stop all of these shenanigans. We go a6, which is the best move. Is the best move. So, like I said, I was considering e5, but this is isn't quite correct. We get a nice later queen pawn, which isn't the end of the world, but of course it is a bit inaccurate. No, not a bit inaccurate. A bit of a weakness, right? We could have had a position like this. Knight f3 can't be played because we take it. But if we just exchange everything, queen comes out to a4 or something. Knight f1 is apparently a move. Um, we just have an isolated pawn. And the thing is, if something like knight f1 gets played and we try and trade the pawns off, for a start this doesn't even work. So our queen's under attack and our rook's under attack. And if we were to do something like this, we're very much losing so we can't even push to try and trade the pawn off it's just going to turn into a long-term weakness and we have no real counterplay so i decided on a6 and i was like look i can play e5 in the future if i want to rook a c1 which i thought was a good move knight here isn't playable because of knight takes d4 remember so rook a c1 we go b5 the computer does like the move queen f4. Also likes bishop g6, but I didn't. I, I thought I could uh, wait to trade the bishops if I wanted to. I didn't feel any rush with that. Queen b8 is the second best move, which is 
<laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Maybe to stop B4 from causing like this to come with tempo. That's a ridiculous move though. I like our B5 move. A little bit subpar apparently, but Queen B1 makes sense. Here, taking on F3 is the most accurate, and then going E5. I don't understand though. Because can't he just play rook e1? No, not rook f1, rook e1. Queen d6. I mean, this is pretty equal, but we just have a weakness. And I feel like his bishop's better than our knight. Especially because all our pawns are on light squares, but here they're actually exploitable with moves like a4. So I'm not really a fan of this. I'm happier with the way I played it with b5. And knight to a5. Knight e5 is the best move from him. We go knight c4. And I don't think he should have taken, uh, for the record. It's difficult to kick this knight out. And I get that it looks annoying. It's also threatening to take this knight. He can just play a move like knight d to f3. Which is what I was expecting. Um, I guess I can trade. And I've got a nice knight. But I don't actually have a way in the position. You know, I might have to build up some kind of positional clamp on the queen side or try and go for b4 at some point. White's fine, though. He's fine. I feel like he tried to force the issue by trading. B takes is definitely the best move. And now the advantage gets into our favor. Bishop c2, rook b8. And rook e3 just looked odd. It just didn't quite seem correct to me and rook b7 i guess looking for rook e to b8 is apparently the best move or rook e7 trying to swing over queen b6 is good though apparently g4 is the best move i feel like i checked this though and then bishop g6 if you exchange g5 knight e4 well then you can defend but this is a difficult position to try and hold because I just win the g5 pawn. And then your king looks pretty weak. I mean, it's difficult for us to exploit it. We've got pressure on the queen side, pressure on the king side. Our knight on e4, I think, is better than his knight on e5. Personal preference. No, I, I don't see how this is only minus 0.5. Oh, we well, know there's knight d7 in this case winning the rook. If you do it here, then can we take, though? We also have queen d8 looking at this. We don't have to give him the exchange. After rook c2. We can just play queen c7. And he defends. The computer just wants to give up the exchange like this, which is kind of interesting. Knight b8, rook b8. I guess the knight's just really strong. And our pawns are difficult to break through, but it's unlikely I would have... Well, I, I know I wouldn't have given up the exchange like that. I would have gone for this kind of... No, not this kind of position. This kind of position. Just with sustained pressure. Maybe I can do this in the future. H4 obviously defends this, but this looks good to me. Maybe rook h3, h5 is scary. Either way, we don't get that. We get... Um, bishop to a4, which made sense. We play rook e c8 for the reasons I described during the game. Here's no good because of knight here. And this is a far better. And rook c2, which is a mistake again. Rook e to e1 is apparently better. And just giving this up. Then you get the B file, so that makes sense. But I don't have to take, and that's not the best move. The best move is King F8, or Rook F8, or Rook B7. But I guess the point is you can't defend this pawn, because this Rook can't help, and this Rook can't help, because then this Bishop gets trapped, which is what happened in the game. After Rook C2, Queen A5, everything else, White is kind of okay. But yeah, Queen A5... 
Uh, bishop d7 is a bit more resilient. But then rook c7, I don't see how you're going to get out of this. g4, bishop g6, takes, takes. Ah, okay, he wants to give the bishop up for two pawns like this. But even then, knight e4... We've got so much pressure going on. We're threatening moves like knight takes c3. We're also threatening moves like queen takes a3 as it is. Or not. Why not? A oh, rookie a deflection. Whoa, what? Take. Now we have an attack. This is some crazy stuff. Anyway, he goes like this. We take. Apparently it was better to take immediately. But this made more sense to me. Because if you take immediately, then I get the b-file. And it just looks like a better version. So okay, we can agree to disagree with the computer. Bishop g6. Yep. Get the rook to move. Bishop d3 is always a move, but we can play that at any time. f3. Yep. Keeps the knight out. And queen c6 is one of the best moves, so I'm happy I found this. I think I kind of realized, yeah, we've got a lot of light squared control. But that means our dark squares are weak, so my queen needs to try and monitor those. So we get on the diagonal before white does. I was a bit concerned here about a move like rook here, trying to go for queen f4. Bishop d3, queen f4 attacks the rook. Queen e8 is the best move. Ah, but then we have this threat. So we're good. Okay, 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 cool. Well, f3, we bring the queen back, get on the diagonal. Rook here. I was worried about moves like queen g3 with some kind of discovery in the future. So I thought I'd just get rid of that. Force the rook back, bishop d3, stop him from doubling on the e-file anymore. We go queen f4, induce g3, which I thought was a mistake. Ah, I missed queen h6, that would have been nice, just sustaining a ton of pressure. But we drop back, not the end of the world. f4 I thought was a mistake. And it, it's definitely not accurate because we just go knight to f6. If you play a move like rook e5, your rook looks like it's going to get trapped. So, he plays queen d1. We drop the bishop back. It's not necessary, but we... is a, is a good move, though. Oh, it's actually the top move. That's interesting. We drop back. Because I want to put my knight on e4, but I want my bishop to help out with the defense and not get stranded in his territory. Like I said, if these queens disappear off the board, it's way easier. Because I don't have to worry about getting attacked. And like my bishop being stranded on d3 is now no longer a problem because I'm not getting mated, right? So my plan is to trade the queens if possible. I was expecting moves like g4 here um, to try and pressure me. But even just like h6, and I'm fine. This, we just push. And if he goes for this... E takes, G takes, Bishop H7. It should be fine to defend this position. Rook G2 looks most natural. Queen F6. I don't even know if this is good for white because the pawn is weak. Our knight is still great. The E-file might open up for us. Although I think this was probably his best try. He goes Rook E E2. We go Rook B3. Queen g4. Okay, bishop f5 was a bit better. And if you venture in, then we take on g3. So he has to go back to f3. And this is the best continuation because you can't go here. You're trying to exploit the g3 pawn. Rook hg2 takes. Queen f2. Bishop h3. Ah, okay, this is winning. But again, I'm not finding this with the amount of time I've got on the clock. So this was more natural to me. Try and get him to dance a little bit. 
then I just lock the position up, give myself a bit of extra time. The thing is, we can break through at basically any point, because we can, as long as we keep White's kingside pressure under control, then we can take a bit of time to improve our position mildly, just secure our rook in place, again, gain a bit of time on the clock to try and think about where the breakthrough is, and the added benefit of making him think. Because he, he, he could just shuffle, but he's like, wait, why is he doing this? Is he threatening to, like, sacrifice and then go through? I'm not. But that's going through his head, right? He's got more to think about. I liked the move knight h5 here. Which isn't the best, but I liked it. The best move is to come back to f6, but we go f5. I thought that was nice because it locks my bishop in place. e6 is weak, but my bishop can just stand here and be a god, basically. And then I can bring my knight back. Queen d1, knight f6. I didn't understand this move, but the rook's running out of squares, to be fair. We drop back to d7. Queen moves. Queen comes back to e8. And yeah, this was an odd move. So what my idea was, let's just say the king moves, for example. I wanted to go queen to h5. And the computer doesn't give this the blessing... But because, like, the computer thinks that I should keep the queens on the board. But my point is, like, look, if I can get the queens off the board, this position comes a whole lot easier. And it's still completely winning. Not as winning, but it's easier for me to navigate so I don't get mated or have him come up with some wild counterplay. So that was my plan. He goes g4. We go queen g5. Rook g3 looks scary. But my plan was knight to h5. And my point is, the rook is under attack. The rook only has one square not to get taken. And then knight f4. I fork the queen, I attack h3. This might be coming in. My knight could be coming to d3. This should be game over. And of course you can't take this, because then I take the rook. And this looks pretty dire. This isn't the, necessarily the most accurate continuation but this would force a trade of queens most likely and obviously like I said that's what I want to do so he goes g5 we go knight h5 all the same attack f4 queen moves h6 is the best but I drop my queen back because I want to put my queen on b8 and I want to play g6 to lock the king side down forever remove all potential danger he moves his king queen d8 and it's basically game over. Uh, the best move is queen h4, where I was just going to go g6. Rook e to e2, queen b8, rook f2 defends. e5 is the best move, there is no way I ever play that. But, I don't know. It's not easy to break through this position. It kind of has everything just about under control. And I guess there's no real targets for my bishop. Maybe I could reroute my knight. Play like queen e8 to f7. And find like a way in for my knight like this. I want to put my queen on f7 to control any h5 ideas. But the game goes on. The game goes on. Um, I, I don't understand this though. If he takes with the f pawn. Queen d8. Rook f4. Queen, wait, what's the idea? It might be one of those positions where the computer thinks it's winning but can't find a way through. My opponent nearly pulled this off, but king h2, yeah, then queen b8. And the thing is, queen b8 is a tough move to see. I think it is tough to see. But yeah, it's just a simple double attack and you can't defend f4. So we trade. Knight f4 first was a bit better, but like I said, I just want to trade the queens. King comes to g3, we get the knight in, rook moves, and then it's just as easy as pushing the pawn. And this rook runs out of squares, it's going to get taken like this, we're up a full piece. We can just march the king into the position, and it's game over. And we are up to 1995 elo, a mere 5 elo off of, three, off of 2000. I, was say, I almost said 3000, we are not 3000. Thank you very much if you've made it to the end of the video. And um, 
yeah, you've been here for more than long enough, so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.